Hey friends, let's talk about blending with acrylics. I got a question underneath my shading tips video about doing it with acrylics, so that's what prompted this video. Thank you, thank you so much for the questions. Um, let's play with just about five different topics. Um, there's a lot more than that, but we'll just start with five. Alrighty, so let's just jump in here. This is the shading video that I was uh, referring to. This is the art I did for it, and this is colored pencil. And it talks about light direction. Um, here's some reflective light. Uh, check out that video if you want. So I just wanted to show you so you knew what I was talking about. And then I'm gonna flip, oh, sorry, I just hit my phone. Flip my paper pad over, and I've got this, oh, sorry. I've got this set up already. And what I did was I painted the paper white. And then you can see here, maybe on the video, I hit it, oh, I've got a nice shadow there. I hit it with my hair dryer, so there's like a little, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little like dent there, so you can see that I've painted it a little uh, darker spot where the paint didn't cover. Um, but I painted it white first because it'll slow down the drawing time as you're painting with acrylics because it can't it can only dry from the top down it can't dry also because the paper is dry and the air comes up through the other side of the paper a little bit um, that's a reason why a lot one of the reasons why a lot of artists will paint what they call a colored ground on a canvas um, it'll let your paints dry a little bit slower It'll keep it, if you paint it a medium color, say a medium blue, if you're painting a overall blue painting, or sometimes it doesn't even matter what color, they'll just paint it the same combination of white, a little bit of Mars black, and a little bit of burnt umber on every one of their canvases, just to get a medium value on the canvas so they can see the difference between the light shades and the dark shades. A little bit easier rather than when you paint on a snow white canvas like this, it's kind of blinding. I'm moving my lights around, trying not to get shadows. <laughs> I don't know if it's helping. Um, oh, and another reason to paint a color ground as opposed to a white ground on a canvas is then you won't have like little bits of white that pop through white canvas. That can happen as the acrylic paint dries, it shrinks up a little bit. And you can get some like little bit of the background showing through. If your background's a medium shade of something, then it just blends right in with the painting. Okay, that was almost another whole nother video. I've put out some ultra ultramarine blue, and oh, I need to put out some white. Sometimes I buy white in the big jar just because I go through it so much. Uh, this is Liquitex Basics, uh, and this is also Liquitex. But it's the heavy body ultramarine blue, just in case you're curious. And then when you're blending too, another thing that can help. This, they, I think they, I call it stepping it out. I think that's a pretty common term. So you pull some color forward. How am I, I don't know if you can see that, but my ultramarine is getting old. It's, it's not um, puddly like that is. Here, I'll show you. I'll clean off my knife here. Paints do eventually get old. You just need to buy new. Or if they come and they kind of look like cottage cheese and you, they come brand new, um, that just means it got frozen or something in shipping. Oh, I was gonna show you how creamy this white is. I don't know if you can, let's well, see what I pulled out. It's, it's smooth, where this was kind of chunky. Maybe you can't see that on the video. Anyway, so I'm gonna make a puddle of ultramarine blue and I grabbed way too much white. Oh yeah, it's kind of sticky. I may have picked the wrong color for this video. So there I think I've already made a mistake, but I think that's good to see. So what we're gonna do is pull a little bit back. We'll make this darker. So all I'm doing is stepping it out in a couple different shades. And that can make it easier. Huh. Sorry, I was just thinking there that I would have thought that ultramarine was a stronger color. And I wouldn't have needed quite so much to make it darker. 
I tend to use Prussian blue, uh, Thalo blue, green shade. So you can tell I'm not as familiar with this color. It's not a bad thing. I just want you guys to know that you can't know everything. You just kind of go with it. When you're painting, you just kind of go with what happens and adjust, because you can always adjust. And then I'm gonna pull out a little more of this and make a lighter puddle. And that can help you with blending. You've already got some options to grab from while you're painting along. Okay, this is kind of fun for me because I'm learning a little bit about ultramarine blue. It's clearly not as strong as a color as I think. Okay, clean off my palette nice so it doesn't get icky. And then let's paint. So I, I wanted you to see that because I don't know if I can keep it on a camera. I'm a little short on real estate. Oh, you might be able to see it all on camera. Yay. And then you can take any brush you want. I'm going to start with this. Oh, gosh. Oh, look, I have blue paint on my hand already. It's a number eight Filbert Royal Lang Nickel. I'm going to get it a little wet because it's it's actually kind of pointy for a filbert, and then it had some stray hairs. And I like to start light, so I'm going to grab a little white, and we're going to say our light area is here, and then grab some of the lighter blue. And it's very much like the other shading video, which you can go watch, or maybe you've already seen it. I'm just gonna blend. Oh, I just drew on here with color pencil and it'll probably show unless I get enough uh, color on here, but it dries. So as I'm painting this, even though I painted this white to help slow, slow down the drying time, I can feel that it's already drying. It's winter here in Omaha, um, so it's dry. I've got a ceiling fan on in my studio, so that doesn't help. I probably should shut that off. And I'm just gonna blend it. I'm just kind of doing almost circular circular motions. Um, you can do a motion that's in the direction of the shape. Yeah, it's drying on me. So I kind of, the whole point of this is I'm working the wet edge. And then sometimes I offload my brush so I don't have too much paint on it. And then kind of blend that out. And so you can buy extenders to keep acrylic paints open longer. Um, I don't use them much, so I just because, and I haven't practiced using them. So I'm gonna start with a darker edge here and start working in the other direction. Um, Cause you can always just go over it. So really this first image here is gonna show you almost all these techniques because I'm going to do a combination of wet and dry because here this is wet on wet and I'm not sure that even painting my paper here has helped slow it down drying much. You can always grab just a drop of water to give you a little bit more time. You could mist your canvas with a fine mist or just a little bit to give you a little more time. There, I just grabbed some white. So now I'm thinking. Oops. Grabbed a little bit of my medium blue there. Boy, this is drying really fast. Um, you might want to get a canvas board to practice on, give you a little more time. Um, I'm doing it on paper because it's cheap. It's just my mixed media sketchbook, notebook paper. But you can tell I'm even having a hard time. 
But that's one thing too, why I don't rehearse, I don't rehearse my videos. But I think it's good for you to see that no matter how long you've been painting, you try something new, you try different um, paint, you try a different surface, it's gonna change. Well, that's all okay. Don't expect to get things right the first time. Drive yourself crazy. So I just offloaded my brush a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this light blue. So sometimes you can't, you kinda have to just watch it. You can't keep working it because the paint will start to lift up. And I'm not crazy about this brush. Can you see it's splitting? Okay, I've got a lot of complaints here today. You can even mix another lighter shade. So here I've got a really light touch going. Okay, that is not bad. We're getting there. So one thing that can really help you with acrylics, oh, I went for my medium puddle here, is layers. And don't be married to like, I definitely wanna, I mean, there are some cases where, we'll talk about it here, I suppose, where you really want a wet blended background. Oh, and it's easier too, I'm not doing it on camera so you guys can see it, but it's easier to turn so you can work an edge. You turn your canvas, you turn whatever you're painting on. And to pull, pull the paint. You'll see me sometimes I push it, but so I'm grabbing a little bit of light. I grabbed some white, but I realized I didn't want that. There, that is not bad. All right, I'm gonna see if I can do a little dark right up here. So it kind of goes down in a hole. And we got a little darker here. I grab a little lighter. Ah, that worked pretty well. Just kind of blend it out. And you can take your time. You can let this dry, because it's dry right there. It's a little, little sticky, but it's pretty much dry. I'm gonna grab a little white here, see if I've still got a little time. Oh, I do. Blend that out. So for the person, or I think there actually might have been a couple people who asked, how did I do? How do you do that shading video that I did with color pencil with acrylics? Um, that's the basics right there. And then you can come back, um, clean up your edges. You can, I would do another layer. I mean, we'll come back, we'll let this dry. Sorry guys, I'm paying attention. So now I'm just kind of lightly dry brushing over it. Oops, and I don't like that dark area, so now I wanna fix that. I need to listen to myself when I say, let just let it dry and we'll come back. Alrighty, cool. So to do wet, it's really a lot like that. I wonder if we wanna put another color out. Let's put a little lime green. A brilliant yellow green. I'm not gonna step that out, it's a lighter color. We're just gonna do a two color blend here. So I've got the white paint on my paper. I'm actually gonna paint almost like a watercolor. You could mist it, but since I have a square here for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna get a little bit wet. And I would recommend it's easier to start with a lighter color 
and go to the darker color. And I'm just cleaning off my brush because I know there's a little bit of blue in there. So I grabbed a little bit of white and a little bit of green. Grab a little bit more white, a little bit more green. So even though I painted this piece of paper with some white acrylic paint, it's still pretty absorbent. And then let's put some straight up green. Now I would go in the same direction. And I can feel that this is this is drying. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some of my ultramarine blue, and it's quite darker. Oh, I got a little green in my brush. Both of these colors are pretty transparent colors. You can see my brush strokes. Um, if you mix a little white with them, let's try this color. See there, it's, I've got some white in that puddle. It's more opaque. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of white because it's drying out. I'm gonna grab some green. You know what? I'm not sure that I like that I painted it white underneath because you can see it's, it's coming through. <clears throat> Should have picked a little bit more opaque colors. <laughs> Live and learn. So another thing you can do, so I'm cleaning off my brush. We'll see if this will work. I'm not sure if it will. As you can take, this is like a little makeup brush. It's dry. Just very lightly. Oh, my paint's drying too fast. I can feel it dragging. Sometimes you can take a brush like that and just buff it out. I almost feel like we should do this video in the summer so I have a little more drying time. So I'm cleaning my brush. Let's start again here. So when you start to feel your paint getting sticky, which I can feel, you know you're getting into a bit of trouble. Ah, oh, there, I'm getting a better blend. And sometimes you just have to let it dry and come back. Can you see I'm kind of, it wants to grab. I'm gonna try a little bit of water. And a smidge blue. So a brush that might work better is a flat brush rather than a filbert. So I'm cleaning off my brush because I'm getting blue up high. I'm going to grab some green and the more paint I get on here, it's wanting to blend better because it's not drying so fast. Sometimes a light touch can really help you. Boy, I am not liking that ultramarine blue. I think I better buy some new one and throw that out. Cool, let's 
leave that alone. I don't know that it's going to get a ton better. Okay, cleaning out my brush. Um, so what I do is I try, I get my brush a little bit wet and I try to get as much as I can off onto the paper towel. Um, one, it, my rinse water lasts longer, but more importantly, I'm not pouring paint down the drain. And then I have two um, water containers. So one for the first rinse, rinse and one for the second rinse. So now let's paint. Um, let's just paint some blue. And we're gonna let this dry. That's interesting how it's acting with the white painted paper below. I'm getting more streaking than I thought I would. So if this is a surface you really wanted to get good at painting on, I'd recommend testing colors and doing this a couple different times. I just wanna show you the gist of it. So here my only goal is just getting some paper on there, or paper, getting some paint on here and letting it dry. Man, that's drying fast. That's already getting dry as I'm trying to move up. So when I paint on canvas, normally it's not this fast. I'm, hopefully I'm not scaring you. I think it's just a combination of uh, fan blowing. Oh, here, I'm gonna go turn off my fan. Okay, I think this is just a combination of a lot of things. I'm painting on paper. I have a fan blowing in my studio. Um, and it's winter. If you live in a really, really dry climate, and it's all the time dry, I would uh, get to know some of the mediums um, that help keep your paint open, give you a little more time. And you can use a wet palette. You can Google wet palettes. And then don't use old paint. <laughs> I'm only laughing because like, I like it when I make mistakes in videos. This one's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of mistakes you could say if you want to call them mistakes. I'm just putting a little more color on top to, I'm looking to get a little bit more solid. Um, so we don't have the white showing through so you can see how it blends a little bit better. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Okay, clean out my brush. So while I'm cleaning, thank you, thank you guys for subscribing. I can't believe I have over 400 subscribers. I've been doing these YouTube videos for a few months now. Um, it originally was just a place to, to store videos, you know, just a place to keep them. And then people started subscribing and started asking questions. That's just awesome. I really love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the likes and the comments. Um, I really love connecting with you guys. Okay, I'm gonna also paint a blue background here um, so we can sh I can show you clouds. So I'm just gonna grab some of my lighter blue. So if you're doing atmospheric perspective, yeah, see, I don't like how you can see my brush strokes. I don't know if it's just the color or what here. Um, if you're doing atmospheric perspective, so you're painting um, from a photograph that you have or a photograph that you find online. Yeah, okay, I wanna mention that that's drying already. I don't know if you can see that. That's really interesting. Um, the sky tends to be brighter blue at the top, and then it gets lighter as it goes down towards the horizon line. But you can paint the sky the other direction. You can have it um, lighter up here and then darker down below. You'll see, you'll see paintings that do that. So one way I like to paint a background is to leave some of the brush strokes in. Um, when I opened this video up, I had Hippie Hair, which is a video that just went up, oh, I suppose it'll be a few days ago, depending on my on the schedule. As I'm video as, videoing this, it's not up on YouTube yet. Um, I'll have some brush strokes, almost like it's clouds, like I'm doing here. 
And I actually like that better than trying to get a completely smooth gradation. Oops. Talking had the wrong color. So we could kind of have, that almost looks a little bit like clouds if we do something like that. Okay, we'll let that dry. And then glazing. So here I picked a couple of good colors for glazing. So I'm gonna paint a blue background and I'll show you. I don't want it too dark so you can see it. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of dark, a little bit of my second step there and a little bit of my white. I'm just gonna paint a background on here. Now see, grabbing a lot more paint is helping. I'm already learning. Look at that, that's better. Grab some more white. So I think with these colors, I happen to need more paint. So people are like, how can I get better? Give me any tips, what's wrong with my painting? Sometimes it's just painting and figuring out the color figuring out the conditions, you know. Those are a couple things I can't help you with totally in a video. Here we're gonna see if we can get a decent blend. Look at that, I just needed more paint. That's kind of pretty. And if it stays wet long enough for you, you can try sort of dusting it with a dry brush. You want a dry brush? Uh, a brush like this would work too, just kind of a mop type brush. And then you can just, you know, lightly pull the color. That's the best blend yet. Okay, I'm cleaning off my brush because I want, I want these areas to dry. Sometimes you just don't have enough paint. really vigorously rinse it now that I've got most of the paint off on the paper towel and then stick it in my clean cleaner water because even after I washed it oh look at that I think this brush needs to go it just got pushed into the <laughs> it got pushed into the, the uh, I don't know what you call that where the crimp is that's kind of funny okay so for a dry blend, you can get as precise, I'm gonna switch brushes, um, as precise or as loose as you want. So this brush is dry, except for I touched it a little bit with my wet finger. And then I'm gonna put a little, uh, so that's varnish. I'm gonna put a little matte medium on my palette. So, so what that does is add basically more of the like acrylic base, but it doesn't add any color. This, It'll look a little cloudy if I mix it. Oh, that's way plenty. Eh, it doesn't really look that cloudy. Sometimes it'll look a little cloudy when you mix it or when you paint with it, but it just makes the paint more transparent. Zinc white is really opaque right out of the tube if you wanna play at home with how, what that is, what that looks like. Okay, so I'm offloading some of the paint. And then I'm gonna grab a little more matte medium. See how you can see the blue coming through? So that's another way to blend. Huh? And then, um, even though this is dry, you can come back over it with another layer. And you can say, well, I want this greener. So there's the um, yellow green straight up. You can see that it's transparent already. Didn't really need the matte medium. But it made a much lighter um, overlay. This is actually glazing, what I'm showing you. Let's just do dry brushing now. 
I kind of jumped ahead there. We have a little green. So that's a little wet on wet. And then you can kind of, my brush is drying out, you can kind of just scumble. And you just sort of do circles. This is more dry brushing. I jumped ahead a little bit. As a way to blend, let's grab a little white. This is getting dark, hard to see. There, now you can see the dry brushing. Oop, and then, I don't know if you noticed, but it picked up, it wasn't completely dry. So it picked up a little paint from underneath, picked up a little bit of the blue. So since I kind of jumped ahead to glazing there, let's clean off my brush. Let's go back and dry brush this guy. So you just basically want as dry a brush as you can get. And then pick up one of your paint colors. I'm gonna pick up this one. I'm just gonna pick up a little because I'm not sure how what it's gonna do. And then you can even paint in circles. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lighter. darker. Oop. And I also have the help of the color that's already underneath helping me blend. So I think one of the key tips with acrylics that new beginner, new painters, beginners don't do necessarily is Use layers because it can really help you get more depth. It can help you get the look you're trying to achieve. So, oh, I don't know if that's off camera. I'm trying to get that on camera there. I'm just picking up different puddles of my paint. Oop, it's getting darker than I want. Let's grab a little light. And you, uh, and you can blend and blend and blend. And that looks smoother. Oh shoot, it's not smooth right there. So I'm kind of working the wet edge and dry brushing. And it can look smoother. You don't necessarily, um, I, I don't think, any, none of my paintings have one layer and I don't, um, I mean, they, they could take hours to paint. Now you don't have to, but it can help you just to slow down. Um, don't rush it, work it. Now see there, I shouldn't have touched it because look what I just did. I can kind of buff that out. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I think sometimes uh, new painters think, well, I should be able to get that done in an hour. Uh, a painting like this, I just, uh, it takes me three hours. And that's kind of another blending technique where you don't really blend that much. You just have brushes showing. And you just kind of have a, there you can see on the top there, you just kind of have a back and forth motion where it's not really blended. That can be a nice background. Okay, let's try some clouds. I'm gonna take some titanium white. And you could use mixing white, but if you don't have mixing white, Take some, uh, you could take a little bit of water, but if you take too much water, it it uh, breaks down the paint and it can actually kind of crack off. So I'm gonna take some mixing white, maybe about half and half with my matte medium. Um, you can use gloss medium too. It'll just have a glossy finish. If you use gloss medium, then when you're done painting, uh, paint over the entire painting with some gel glass medium or some matte varnish or something to even out, even out the shine. Sorry, I'm like waving my hand in front of the camera. Okay, let's uh, clean up my brush a little bit. 
Let's see how this looks. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. Oh, there we go. And so I'm gonna kind of push. Oh, there's paint on the edge. I'm gonna offload my paint. And then like if I was using this kind of a brush too, but since it's drying so fast on me. Oh, it's lifting up the paint below. I'm gonna I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer. I'll be right back. Okay, so that brought to mind if I painted a background like this on a painting, I would probably set it aside and start another painting or do something else that I was working on. Um, because even though this was dry to the touch, and it's still dry to the touch, the uh, wet acrylic paint can kind of wake it up and pick up and lift off the paint underneath. So I think that's a great tip, even though this is a blending video. Uh, you just saw it happen right there. And then I'm gonna go to my filbert just because it has a softer edge. Um, and as long as I've got it out, I'm gonna grab just a little bit more glazing medium. Let's see. And, oh, and I, had, I just touched up that area a little bit with some blue paint. Let's see if we can't. Yeah, the filbert's working a little better for me. You'll find what brush you like best. And so I just kind of let the paint run out of the brush. I didn't have much in there. And so this is also glazing. But it's an easy way. And then if you really wanted, well, here, let me not jump ahead too much here. So I'm just making circles. And sometimes I pull it, pull it out because clouds get flat sometimes as you go off into the distance. And then if you wanted grab just a little bit of the straight up titanium white, and then you can define a little bit more, which I think is really fun. I think clouds can be super fun. If you can see that, I'm gonna pick this up. Okay, hopefully you can see that better. And then we've done glazing um, already, but should we just play with it on a little bit different background? And that, so that was dry brushing, and then we did dry brushing scumbling here. Uh, this is wet on wet, but really this is wet on wet too, and it blended better with more paint. Um, I think sometimes white helps you to blend. Where here is I did two transparent colors and it's a little harder. So that's also a good tip for blending. Um, don't think you're sometimes, sometimes you're doing nothing wrong. It's just how the paints play together, um, how transparent they are. All right, so let's take a little bit of our, I forgot what color that is. It's like a light lime green, lime yellow green, um, with the glazing mix uh, liquid already in it. Let's just see how it looks. And remember, this green is already a transparent color. I got a little hunk of junk in there. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of dried paint or something. But see, that could be really pretty, depending on what you're looking for. Or say you're painting an apple and you will say you want an area um, just a little bit greener. You can take a little bit of green and just glaze it over. And you could do it in circles. Circles are really nice because then they don't always, and then you could pick up a little bit of blue. They don't always show your brush stroke direction so much. You can kind of hide them and then soften it back. So maybe you just have a little bit of a green highlight on the top left of your apple. Take a little more blue. Whoop. Working the wet edge here and it's drying on me again. <laughs> I should clean off my brush. Ah. I think I need a little bit of water. Let's grab a little bit of water, just a drop. There we go. So if things aren't flowing quite right, quite right, why, if 
things aren't flowing quite right. Let me just need a little bit of water. Okay guys, I'm gonna turn the video around, say goodbye. Hey, I hope this helped. There's a lot of great tips that popped up in this video as I was doing it. I hope it answers your questions on how to shade with acrylic paint like I did my color pencil shading video. I really, really appreciate you spending your time with me. It means so much to me. Uh, relax, enjoy painting, have fun with it. Don't worry about, you know, don't worry about it. You'll just get better and better as you do it if you're new to it. Great big art hugs and I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.